Hello and welcome back to She Walks, She Paints. Thank you for joining me again. And if you've watched my other videos and either liked, commented or subscribed, thank you so much for doing that. I really do appreciate it. It's really helping me grow my channel and it's just an all around good feeling. Makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing. Apologies for any vehicle sounds. I'm actually just beneath uh, a bridge which is on the North Coast 500 route, which is a big driving route around the North Coast of Scotland. Really, really beautiful, really scenic, very popular. So let's hope I don't get interrupted too many times. <laughs> So today we're in a place called Betty Hill, which is on the far north coast of Scotland and it's a really beautiful place. We really love it here. We come every year and it's just a really beautiful place to spend some time. But we're going to walk along the River Neva, which is just behind me here, and we end up at the coast as well. So it's the mouth of the river and we're going to climb up a hill, find some more history, hopefully find lots of things to photograph and paint and hopefully it's going to be a good day. You might have already seen this location on my partner Willie's channel, Dirty Secrets of Scotland, if you watch that. He's going to be doing some history hunting of his own and obviously Jack will love it because there's a river and there's the sea. So it's pretty much his perfect walk too. So <laughs> let's head out, see what we find today and I hope you enjoy it. felt very eerie looking into this abandoned house. I kept expecting to see someone or something looking back at me. It's so strange that there are things still hung on the door, maybe just as they were left by the last inhabitant. We're going on adventures. Okay, let's go. some kind of parcel tied up with string, which I was so curious about, but I wanted to respect the cottage and leave exactly as we found it. It will just have to stay a mystery. Jack got. Can I have it? 
today hence why my eyes are watering so much although it's a lot better than it has been this week so <laughs> I usually tell people that May is one of the nicest months to come to Scotland because you get the nicest weather and you don't have as many midges um, so typically while we've been up here it's been awful weather <laughs> it's been super super windy and really cold so today's the first day where it's kind of calmed down a bit so we've taken the opportunity to come out but yeah still quite windy my eyes are watering but I'll crack on. <laughs> I found out later that this is called the cuckoo flower, as it appears around the same time as the cuckoos arrive in late spring. In folklore, cuckoo flowers were said to be sacred to the fairies, so it was unlucky if brought indoors. For this reason, despite flowering at the right time, it was never included in May Day garlands. until you see that. Ugh. I have to take that home and dispose of it. Hey pups. I've already had to take one layer off because the sun's come out which is lovely and we're about to start climbing up this little hill so I think I'm probably gonna have to take more layers off as we go but let's get on. There he goes, the mountain dog.
This incredible landscape has evidence of human activity going back to the Stone Age, up to 12,800 years ago, through to the 18th century, when the last settlement was abandoned. If you haven't seen it already, you can find out more about this history in my partner Willie's video. So we're in another broch. Um, for those of you who don't know or haven't seen my earlier video, a broch is a 2,000 year old, approximately, structure that's unique to Scotland. You might have seen my video which was hunting for otters in Sandaig Bay and we visited two brochs then, which were quite complete so you could see the structure. This one, slightly more of a ruin. As you can see, not much left of it. And this is more like what brochs are in general. But check out that view. I mean, worst places to build your house, right? I wonder what this would have looked like 2,000 years ago. It probably did look quite different, but I'm sure it was still as beautiful. So yeah, don't blame them for building their house here or whatever it was. We don't know if it was a house or something religious or some kind of fortification. A lot of rocks are built on these areas where there's a good viewpoint and there's often a river or the sea close by. So it could be a stronghold. It could be something fortified. We don't know, but that's the mystery and I love that. Hey puppy dog. This is good boy, come on. <laughs> Does he want to go to the beach? And just like that, as we start to climb again, the sun comes out again. I think the Scottish weather is playing with us.
While the landscape here is beautiful, it can also be very harsh on the wild north coast of Scotland, exposed to the Atlantic Ocean, so you can understand why the communities here moved elsewhere. Well, I'm feeling very windswept right now, but that was such a lovely walk. I really, really enjoyed that. Going up on the hill and seeing the broch and then down to the beach. And now we're just walking back along the river, which is fortunate because Jack will give himself a wash. So he won't be all salty and sandy when we get home. And he'll be super soft as well because it's this amazingly clear highland water and his fur goes all fluffy and soft. It's so nice. So yeah, beautiful day, taking lots of pictures. We had a great day filming for Willie's channel as well. So we'll have two videos based on the same walk, which is really exciting. So you have to make sure to check that out as well if you haven't already. I will head on back now and I'll see you in the studio. On our way to the local cafe for some refreshment, we couldn't resist having one last look at the view of Torresdale Bay from the other side of the river. I decided to paint the butterfly sitting on the cuckoo flower and purposefully offset the composition to one side as I want the butterfly to be the main focus of the painting. Just because the flowers aren't the main focus doesn't mean I can pay less attention to them though. If they don't look right, they will detract attention from the butterfly.
I've used the fluorescent yellow watercolour pen while mixing paint for the butterfly's wings to capture that luminous colour that caught my eye. The tops of this butterfly's wings are actually white with black spots, but it is named for the colourful undersides which appear green. This green colour is actually an illusion created by a combination of yellow and black scales. Here I'm using a thin paintbrush to make lots of tiny dots and capture the pattern in the butterfly's wings, almost like pointillism. It was in this section that I noticed that I must have dropped some water on the page, as the paint on the wing had smudged slightly. It's frustrating when this happens, but I decided to keep going. I was sure I could fix it when it dried out. the smudge from earlier that I'm going to try and fix. It could have been a lot worse. I'm always worried about knocking my water part over the painting or making a big mistake with my brush that can't be fixed. If you look very closely, you can tell where the smudge was, but it's all part of the painting process and I'm happy with it as it is. If 
you like what I do and want to support my channel, there are lots of ways to do this. You can like, comment, subscribe, or follow me on Instagram for free. You can buy a print from my Etsy store, or you can buy me a coffee on my Ko-fi page. All the links to my pages are in the video description below. Good boy. 